All right, you know Balloon Fiesta is New Mexico's biggest tourist draw. Hundreds of thousands of people come here every year. It brings an awful lot of cash into the city. Now the mayor wants to spend a lot of that cash to put a permanent pavilion out there at Balloon Fiesta Park. Yeah, the plan is to build a 10,000 square foot structure to use year round. There's a laundry list of things that need to be done at that park, and uh, from, from permanent bathrooms and restroom facilities uh, to additional facilities so that we can use it for events other than the Balloon Fiesta. Well, right now, there is a big upgrade in the works for Fiesta 2014. It's to build a $3 million year-round pavilion with permanent bathrooms on the park's southeast corner. It would serve as a headquarters during Balloon Fiesta and could be rented out at other times. Now, voters have already approved half of the money for the pavilion. They'll be asked to approve the other half in the October election. On Monday, the Albuquerque City Council must sign off on the first big-scale public art project at the Balloon Museum. Now, the piece is a giant compass surrounded by two dozen wooded poles and a big silver ring. It's so that balloonists can see their direction when they're up in the air. Now, the $137,000 project is being paid for with city and state money. The city is calling on artists from across the country to apply to design it, and actually 64 already did, including 10 New Mexicans. But guess what? The winner was actually a man from Minneapolis. I think what we try and do is, is the interstate commerce uh, effect, where um, we invite out-of-state artists to come in, particularly on projects of this size, to apply for it, as, as such as other states would do for our New Mexico artists. Now that was the project manager, and he says the artists should be working with local contractors and businesses to get the piece installed once the council signs off. They are calling it a triple investiture in layman's terms. That means three new judges will be sworn in in the Rotunda in Albuquerque just after five tonight. Peg Holguin, Michelle Castillo Dowler, and Jason Greenlee will all take their oaths at the same time as the Metro Court judges. The court tells us this triple swearing in ceremony is a precedent setting event. It is now up to the full Senate to decide if U.S. Attorney Ken Gonzalez will become New Mexico's next federal judge. The Senate Judiciary Committee unanimously approved Gonzalez's nomination yesterday. President Obama has appointed him to replace Judge Bruce Black of Santa Fe, who's retiring. Mr. Gonzalez has been a U.S. Attorney for about the last three years. A guy who admits he was drunk when he flipped his SUV in Albuquerque last year, killing his passenger, should find out this morning how long he'll be in prison. Luis Avila Calvo pleaded guilty to homicide by vehicle and DWI charges last month. Now, he admits he caused this deadly crash last January. It was over off of I-40 near Atrisco Vista. We'll let you know later how much time he will serve. Today, also sentencing day for the man known as the Arroyo Molester. Hinaro Sandoval is expected to learn his fate this afternoon. In January, a jury found him guilty on all four counts. They include rape and kidnapping charges. Sandoval was arrested back in 2007 after DNA matched him to the rape of a young boy. Sandoval is also charged with separately molesting six five other boys. The Albuquerque police sergeant charged with vehicular homicide for a crash that killed a woman went to jail Thursday, but it was only for a brief while. Adam Casaus was booked into MDC. They took his mugshot, then he posted bond and was released. Investigators say Casaus was off duty, speeding in his police SUV when he ran a red light. It happened at a west side intersection, and it happened on February 10th. Uh, he apparently hit a car carrying Ashley and Lindsay Broward. Ashley was killed. Her sister was badly hurt. Casals claims he was going after a drunk driver, but witnesses at his preliminary hearing this week said they saw no other cars. A judge ruled there is enough evidence to put Casals through trial. The teenage mom, police say, almost killed her own baby boy, is still in jail this morning and probably will be for quite some time. Hannah Smith is just 18 years old and is locked up at the MDC without bond. Last week, she called 911 from her home on the west side right here and said her 11-month-old son was unconscious. Well, police say he was badly, badly hurt. Investigators say Smith's 17-year-old boyfriend, Leroy Garcia, was also at the home at the time. And investigators say he admitted to smoking spice. Both of these two are charged with child abuse. And a teacher in Albuquerque could be charged with child abuse as early as today because a number of students say he roughed up a couple of sixth graders. 
Police say John Dominguez told them he was breaking up a fight between two kids at John Adams Middle School last week. When he chased one of them, the kid fell and hurt his arm. But the students who saw what happened have a very different story, saying Dominguez, the teacher, pushed the kid he was chasing to the ground and kicked another kid. Dominguez is on paid leave. The district attorney will decide if he'll face criminal charges. A 10 year old girl who was badly injured in a crash at a busy Rio Rancho intersection remains in critical condition. The girl was riding in a minivan. It was hit by an RV Wednesday afternoon at Northern and Unzer. The driver of the van and another, the other child inside were released from the hospital Wednesday night. Now, no one in the RV was hurt. Police are still investigating who was at fault. A small victory for the widow of a Powake police officer who died saving a child's life more than a decade ago. Officer Kevin Schultz was off duty when he drove into the Rio Grande near Pilar to save a 12 year old boy. Schultz brought him to shore, then collapsed in shallow water and drowned. A medical examiner thinks he may have hit his head on a rock. Now his wife Cheryl tried to secure workers compensation benefits, but was denied because apparently she had missed the deadline. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court has now ruled the Powaki Police Department is at fault for failing to make good on the promise to file it for her. The Court of Appeals must now consider whether Schultz was acting within the scope of duties when he died, making him eligible for those benefits. And it was actually the uh, state Supreme Court that made that ruling. So we'll keep you posted on when it ends up happening.